Hillary, I missed you. <laughs> free, free, rejoice. Rejoice. Otis, welcome. Rejoice. Bing, rejoice. Sly, rejoice. Sir, peoples, rejoice. Let's get in here. Let's get in here. Sound like Pastor Hannah. Jazz, rejoice. Let's get in here. Dr. Austin. Kathy Hudson. Good evening. Minister Amy. What's up? Sister Katrina. Come on, guys. Tisha, let's share. Let's get in here. Let's share. I find out the more we share. The, hey, 2.0, I miss you, baby. Mavis, rejoice. Robin, rejoice. KBJ, I got your text. Jeanette, rejoice. This is Irene. Love abounds for real. Shirley Wiggins. Brother Sullivan, rejoice. First Lady Cousins, rejoice. BZ! Can I get one bud? Oh, wait a minute. I don't have a team that re remembers. Sherelle, I love you. Can I get a one bud? What, what? Thank you. That's for you, BZ. <laughs> good times. Good times, good times. Is Peaches on? Let me tell you, Peaches. Doing prayer of last week. Hey, Zesta, rejoice. Doing prayer of last week. Min uh, Minister Constance, Lady Connolly, and Joe. Uh, we told everybody about the excellent news about being in remission. Is Peaches on yet? That's Peaches. And uh, I didn't see that you had put it on the board, but baby, we had already prayed and made that announcement. You healed by the blood of the lamb, honey. Walk heavy. Walk with the big dog. Stomp. Get off the porch. Now you can roll with the rest of us. So we thank God for the remission of the cancer on, on, on Peaches. I salute the crane. Amen. Amen. Amen again. The Murphys is on. Yes, indeed. Not the Murphys are on. The Murphys is on. Lady Edmonds. <laughs> BJ, what would? What would? Crystal, welcome, baby. Crystal Gooch, welcome. Come on, guys. Let's get in here and share. We're going to have a good discussion tonight. Hey, glad guys. It's coming through strong. What do you like about this thing, Gladys? What is it that keeps driving you to come back to be with us? What is this thing? Hey, Donji. Thank you, Dr. Austin. <laughs> my, 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 my. Yes, Mama Free. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. Salita Crane said, what, what? <laughs> I tell you, Mother Prince is on again. Praise God. Wait, praise God. Rochelle, missing you madly. <clears throat> I got some good news. Is Ardenia on? Ardenia Davis, let's see if she gets on here tonight. Let's see if she, let me know if she gets on here tonight. I'm taking my time tonight because I'm exhausted. Did Bubbles Lure get on? Okay, Miss Hobbs is on. Give me a hand wave, Miss Hobbs. Robert said, is that good teaching? And I'll tell you, it's like loving from the Easy Bake Oven. Sure, welcome back. Welcome back. Sure, why do you, keep, why do you come back? What, what's, what's the draw here, guys? What's the draw? Is it because the, the glasses, the hair, the confidence, what is it? Or is it the word? Why are you here? We're going to do a couple things differently tonight because we're going to move right along. Hey, Jamaica. Can't wait to see you. Can't wait to see you. Do y'all have your t-shirts? 
did you call in and did, did, did you go on the website and order your t-shirts for homecoming service? Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. You need this in green. Get on the website. Are my members? I'm <laughs> Nicole Winston, the swagger. And uh, those members and, and handle your business so you can get your t-shirts and I can show you where you're going to pick them up. And what we're going to be wearing Saturday and the Holy Ghost time we're going to have on Sunday. My, 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 my. My, 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 my. Well, Kathy Hudson, all my glasses are my accessories. And before glasses were popular, I still couldn't see. <laughs> and so my prescription changes very rarely. So... I, uh, Ann Taylor's in the house. Pastor Taylor, welcome, welcome. Uh, so I accumulated over 40 pair of, uh, spectacles. So they're all around the house in cases and things of that nature. It's just a, another part of my personality. Is I say it's when your accessories, uh, when your uh, accessories are your necessity. And glasses are a necessity for me. We're going to read the announcements, and we're going to start with the announcements because my team has found out that you all are not opening your announcements. Thank you, Kathy. You all, and so the announcements will be read by uh, Jessica. Read, Jessica. Good evening, NBC. Uh, first and foremost, if you did not read or receive your NBC midweek announcements, put a hand in the chat. And a member of the PR team will contact you if you're not receiving those announcements because they're critical to your church growth. Amen. So 2021 is our year of navigation. And as always, NBC's model and vision is to born to praise God and serve his community in mind, body, and in soul. So in June, we'll be having our homecoming service, but you have to register. We are still in the midst of COVID. And so registration is required from all members and those who would like to attend to attend June service. And you can register on our website. Um, that service will be June 19th. I'm not going to disclose the location just in case you decide not to register and you just want to show up. But you may register um, and we can put that link in the chat. Can we do that for registration? Thank you. Next up, also in the month of June, we will be honoring our pastor and shepherd, our founder, none other than the right Reverend Kathy A. Mary. That's me. And That's me. we'll be doing that uh, in monetary gifts of $180 per person. Or that more. Is, or more. That is $10 a year for the 18 years that she has given us this good word. And those of you who may not be NBC members yet, we also encourage you to give because you too are feasting on the abundance of God right. in her life. Because she gives the good good. I'm okay. not going to say that. Okay. But we encourage you. <laughs> we encourage you all to give as you've been given to. Amen. New t-shirts. So on the weekend of our homecoming, we will be wearing these lovely new NBC t-shirts. Um, and you can order, if you have not ordered already, your t-shirt also on the website. If you ordered a t-shirt and have not yet paid, you can also do that via Cash App or PayPal. All of those uh, ways to give um, and to pay for your t-shirt are, are on our website. Um, yes. Also, while we have wonderful Bible study on Wednesdays, you're attending right now, thank you. We also have a prayer call every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you can find that number as well as the access code on our website. Also, if you are in need of prayer, we are a praying church and we believe in the miracles and the manifestation of God. You can email your prayer request to Lord Bless at newbirthcommunityame.org. That's Lord Bless at newbirthcommunityame.org. Also, on this Saturday, June 5th, we will be having our virtual Afro-Caribbean dance class. Megan, wave, wave in the chat, Megan. Dr. Doldrin. Dr. Doldrin teaches an awesome Caribbean 
uh, dance class every other Saturday. Some of us have been picking up a little something during pandemic. Come, come shake that off. Um, dance class is available via Zoom at 4 p.m. That is also information also available on our website. First and third Saturdays of each month. Future home of NBC. We are in the process and we're excited about um, our forever home. So people are submitting and evaluating potential properties. Um, there is a link, again, on that wonderful website. So because we are virtual, because we are um, spread out throughout the country, the website is going to be your source for information. So make sure you've registered. Make sure you have a profile. Make sure that you stay plugged in because that's how we communicate with everybody near and far. Um, so the future home of NBC, if you see a property, if you see something you think that God has led you to be our forever home, fill out the survey or contact Hillary Ward, who is the structural support director for NBC. Also, we're praying at noon for our forever home that God blesses as he does. There are also multiple ways to give. You can find that on our website. We don't want to stop giving just because we're in pandemic because God has blessed and kept us all. Amen. Amen. Um, so there is PayPal. There is Cash App. There are drop-offs available. And there are also uh, the ability to mail checks. If you have any questions about anything else, any information, anything you're not getting, please, I see some things are in the chat. Um, so I'll make sure to go through the chat and address you all to make sure um, your needs are being met. Again, register, 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 because you don't want to miss this event in June. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jessica, for those announcements. Now, the reason Jessica read those announcements is because you all are not reading them. <laughs> and if I left it up to your own devices, uh, only 50%, because we can tell if you go for your uh, uh, announcements or not, and you're not opening them. And you need this information, because when you have the information, you quit bothering other folks. Okay, be responsible. NBC is a selfish, selfish ministry. You've got to be responsible for how you move. You've got to be responsible for the blessings that's come your way. And so we need to get on it. I am so pleased to pastor this fine Zion. I don't know what to do, but I know that we could be stronger. Now, the reason I asked a couple people when we first got on is why do you keep coming back? Because I need to know what is this draw? What, what is it that, that we're doing in NBC that makes people want to, to be with us, to, to, to worship with us? Now, this is amazing because this is just straight words. There's no music, and I thank God for a musical, beautiful musical team that I have. Uh, the administrative team, uh, the team of hospitality, my ushers. I mean, it, we all work together in order to bring you a comprehensive experience along with a good word. So we want to thank you all for getting on with us and, and dating me on Wednesday nights and worshiping with me on Sunday morning. But guess what time it is? It's word time. Now tonight we're going to chop it up because we've got some things we've got to do and I want you to understand that how you live reflects on how good God has been to you. All right? All right, let's get started. Let's have a moment of prayer. Lord bless. There you go. Catch it if you can. Shanice, hey, welcome, pumpkin. Welcome, 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 welcome. Now it's time, that's right, lady cousins, for the uncut funk of the word. Ready to go into this? I wish Ardenia was on here, but I know that she might be running late from work. Ardenia became a member yesterday, and she was pleased with it. So another has come to the kingdom of God as well as the kingdom of NBC. And we thank God for growth. There's somebody out there fishing, and we're catching fish left and right. So those of you, let's welcome her and give her the best uh, uh, when she gets on and let her know that, uh, let me know when she's here. Because sometimes I'm not seeing it. All right? All right. Now, let us go back to the honesty. Hey, Pam, let us go back to the honesty of uh, being a challenge in wisdom. How many of you understood a Sunday's message? How many of you understood Sunday's message? To the illustrious PT. Boy, <laughs> you and PT, I tell you, kind sir. How many of you understood Sunday's message? Is Krusty on? Is Krusty on? Krusty, I didn't see you. Speak to your pastor. Speak to your pastor. All right, there you go. There you go. Now, we find that <clears throat> there's a difference between honesty and truth. And, and one of the concerns are honesty is the commitment of, of not lying, but truth is God. Truth is the word of God. 
So I've got to be healthy enough to be able to pair honesty and truth. And what we find out that the challenge is, hey, Big Daddy, I didn't see you. We find out that the challenge is, in my honesty, I am my own worst enemy. I am, because my truth is not God's truth. And my honesty overrides godly wisdom. And so what's happening is, I begin to beat myself up over the things that I've done wrong. I need you all to work with me tonight and to talk it over with me and to see if that same thing is in you. Have you ever, and that's the thing I'm talking about, have you ever talked yourself out of having, out of having a good day? Have you, ever talk, have you ever told yourself that you didn't deserve some of the blessings that you received? Have you, heard, have you ever told yourself that you're so grimy and you're so low that, that you don't deserve some of the things that are coming your way so you repel them? Have you become your own uh, shield so when people want to touch or they want to involve themselves with you or reach out to you, you don't receive it because you feel you don't deserve it because of your honesty? Now, the honesty is, and we talked about it earlier, the honesty is we've been groomed to be honest. As a child, you know, growing up, my mom used to just tell me the truth. Just tell me the truth. And I'm like, hmm. And she convinced me to tell her the truth. Just tell me the truth. I was under the interpretation, if I tell her the truth, then she's not going to whoop my behind. She's not going to spank me. She's not going to discipline me. Because she says, just tell me the truth as if it was volleying Volleying, 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 volley me out of a situation that I was in, and it was just going to send it back to me, and I wouldn't be disciplined for it. No, I tell the truth. I didn't get a spanking. In turn, then it makes me not want to tell the truth anymore because of the discipline. Then I begin to run from the person who supplies all my needs. Did you get that? Did you get that? So we've learned to run from the person that supplies our needs. We've learned to run from the first because of being afraid of the discipline that comes along with it. And so now I'm running from my mother uh, b because I'm afraid of the discipline because my father didn't spank the girl. That, that was unheard of. So my mother, I'm running from her, and then I'm running to her when I want something, and then I'm running from her when I feel I've done something wrong. And it was just a, 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 a back and forth, constantly back and forth, constantly back and forth because I was not taught that the discipline was for my good. Come on now, you all remember the what I ought to be, don't you ever, don't you, if you can't, now, I'm like, my God, what is the rhythm of this pain? My mother, you do, you know better, I did what, and, and you be trying to hop and skip and hold and grab the belt. You know, I've only had one spanking, but it looks like I've had many. No, because I knew at an early age, I did not like pain. Oh, you missed it. So what did that mean? Did you not do anything wrong? No. I mean, I began to be better at hiding it. What are you saying? I'm saying my name is David. Oh, my God. <laughs> my name is David. I, I, can we talk just us? You know, because I really don't give a hoot natty what the world thinks. Because I'm clean now. Are there any more Davids in the house? Hey, Jeremy. Are there any more Davids in the house? I'm talking about I became pretty good at hiding what I had done. Come on, don't, come on, don't leave me out here like this. Are there any more Davids? Oh, my house phone might ring because I forgot to take it out of Are there any more Davids out there? Let's talk. I became a smooth criminal. Uh, 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 uh. Me and Mike Jackson. Uh, uh, uh. I really did. I became a smooth criminal because I didn't want the discipline and I knew I had done things wrong. What were those wrong things? I was a sinner. Yes, I was a sinner, you know, and I, I done things, I had done things wrong, but I wanted people to still revere me as a good girl, because I was, I was Ruby's daughter, who sang in the choir, who had long curly hair, cute little fat girl, yeah, 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 who had all, on a roll, high IQ, yeah, they thought that she was going to be a preacher, but I cried for every Easter speech. See, I wanted, I wanted that so much because that's what my mother wanted for me. <laughs> this honesty is, ooh, I need to turn an air conditioner. It's getting warm in here. See, the honesty of that is all the things that I wanted, I could not decipher if I wanted them for me or I wanted them for her. And then I didn't, didn't know whether to be honest with her and whether to hurt her feelings 
or did I just want to be a two-bit whore? I, I didn't know. I was trying to find myself. But in the meantime of my sinning, in the meantime of me doing all these things, I couldn't figure out who I was. And I, I was getting caught up in a snare of webs because I did not want people to see what I saw in the mirror. And I saw me through my honesty versus through the godly wisdom. I allowed a church and a community to rear me without me participating in it. Got to be more careful. I gave myself to the church and to my parents, and I had no say-so. And so what did I become? I became that thing that I didn't know who the hell I was. I, I, I knew that I had talents. I knew that I had purpose. I knew that I was gifted. I knew that there was something inside of me, but there was a stagnant in me. <clears throat> that I could not explain. See, I knew that there was something great inside. Uh oh, I'm about to. I'm gonna be quiet because I'm. A, I ain't getting no answers. Y'all ain't talking back. Y'all ain't letting me know that you hear what I'm saying. And I know for sure I'm not the only one. Talk to me, Angela. You know what's up? We were raised in the church, and our parents were good people. But God got it. Some of the decisions I made, I don't know if they were mine, or I made them out of frustration. Or what they, what my mother wanted me to do? I don't know. I don't know. And see, this is what David was wrestling with. David was a good person. But there were some things in him that, that, that took place, but he could not explain. But then again, he cared what the people thought. So I cared <clears throat> what the people thought because I thought, hey, Reverend, clearly, because I thought it would be a reflection <clears throat> on how they looked at my mother. And I knew she was a hardworking woman. And I knew she loved me, and I knew that my parents did the best that they could. But it was difficult for me to get it together because I was doing things that no one knew. Yeah. Those are called hidden sins. Hidden sins, the honesty, the hidden sins of a good person. And so, out of the web that I had created for myself, I could not figure out what was really, hey, and what was really best for me. And then I began to hang with the crowd, and then I began to do things, and then I became more saturated. I became more saturated in hiding. The honesty is when you hide, the only person you're running from is the people who give you the most. Because the people who are not giving you the most, your parents or God, other people could care less if you're hiding. I was disservicing myself. I was disservicing myself because just like David, I, w I cared what the wrong people thought. Oh my God. Th these things, the honesty had me confused. It was blurred from childhood. So there's a repentance <clears throat> which says, I'm sorrowful for what I do. Then there's atonement which says my actions change because of, of my sins. There's an action that comes place after that comes forth that says I'm trying to uh, uh, do better. There's a structure that says I'm going to do better after this. See, David saw Bathsheba and wanted to be with her was the beginning of his challenged desire. After his challenged desire, it escalated because he couldn't control the challenge into another sin of murder. And so when it begins, if you don't handle your honesties, they override and become really extremely powerful. So David was not concerned with the fact that he knew God knew everything, he was more concerned that the people would find out. You see, David didn't get in this situation because of God. He got into this situation because of the crowd. And I tell you all the time, you got to watch that crowd. It will dictate to you in silence. It will, it will, it will... It, it will make you think you've got to fit in, so you've got to do this. It's a silent killer. 
is worse than high blood pressure. The crowd. David, in Psalms 51, he prayed this prayer after his interaction with Bathsheba and Uriah. And I'm going to have the entire prayer read, verses 1 through 13. Psalms 51, 1 through 13. Now, remember now, this is the prayer of a murderer. This is the prayer of a murderer who has a good heart that got lost along the way. Okay, I'm saying this because some of you have gotten lost along the way. You may not have committed murder, but you have gotten lost along the way simply because you've allowed a challenge, whatever your challenge is, you've allowed a challenge to override what you knew, and that is godly wisdom. Because God said that his wisdom has been in you from the onset. You've allowed what you think of you to override what God thinks of you. And so David prayed this prayer. Read. Verse 1. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity. And cleanse me from my sin. Stop. Now he calls right here, he calls them transgressions and iniquities. You know, those, those are words that we're not using now. But sins. Transgressions and iniquities. Sins. You wash those away. I need help. Do, do something with your blood, your, your salvation. Your, I need you. This is his prayer. I need you to help wash this away. Because obviously there were, it was an albatross around his neck. Come on now, some of our sins choke us and dangle us and, and cause us to slow down. He said, watch, do something, God, get this off of me. These are the things that he said, I cannot do this alone. Read. Verse 3, for I know my transgressions and my sin is always stop, before me. Stop, honesty. I know, I know I've done wrong. I know my transgressions. I know I slept with this married man. I know I shouldn't be selling weed. I know I shouldn't be doing I, I know I shouldn't be giving other people's credit cards. I know. I know my transgression. So he said, God, I'm not done to this. But there's something happening on the inside of me. There's something happening, and I cannot override. I cannot access the godly wisdom at this point. It's out of control. Have you ever been out of control? Have you ever wanted to retreat and can't turn back? And you think I'm too far here now? Hell, just keep getting deeper. This is what happened with David. David thought Bathsheba sex. He never thought that it would web into murder. Read. For I know my transgressions. God knows. And my sin is always before me. Mm -hmm. Against you. You only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict. Stop. So he recognizes. Now look at the oxymoron here. He recognizes that I'm sinning. My sin is toward you, God. He said that. Read it again. Listen to what he says, though. Read it. Verse 4. Against you and you only have I sinned. Stop. So he said, I've sinned against you. Now, look at this. Look at the power of your honesty. I know I've sinned against you, but I'm afraid of what the people think. See, I have not sinned against the people. I've sinned against you, God, but I'm afraid of what the people think of me because of that. Oh, my God, he's, he's tied up now. Now he's entangled. Now he doesn't know what to do. Now things are really out of control. Wait a minute. I've sinned against God. Oh, but what if my servants find out? Or what if the other... Uh, leadership finds out, what, what am I going to do? So now he's becoming irrational. The same kind of irrational the king was when he said, throw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fiery furnace and turn the furnace up seven times hotter. Ain't no such thing. Once it hit his flame requirement, it's hit his flame requirement. Now he is irrational. But his prayer is one from his heart. From his heart. I, don't, I know my transgressions, God. Read. Against you. You only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. 
yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Ah! It's in there. You can turn this thing around. You can turn your life around. It's in there. You, you, don't, you don't have to wait. You don't have to wait. All I want to do is awaken that place inside of you of that wisdom. You don't have to be in the place that you're in. But they say, the potter wants to put you back. Is that the Hawkins family wants to put you back together again? Your brokenness is surrounded by how you view what you've done. You have not yet forgiven you for the things that you've done, but God has forgiven you. He says, He says, I recognize your judgment is I, I receive your judgment. He says, I receive it. But does he really? And this is what I'm asking you. Are you receiving his judgment? Are you receiving it in the way that he wants you to receive it? God says, yes, this is a sin. I don't want you to do this. But nothing can separate our love. Nothing can separate unless you walk away. Oh, my God. Why, why do you say that, Pastor? Because our churches are empty because people are not walking away. They're running. They're running. It's a marathon. They're getting the hell out of there. They don't want nothing to do with it because the first thing a pastor preaching in these pulpits is you're going to hell, you're going to hell, you're going to hell. I don't know where you're going. You could be going to Memphis for all I know. My job is to teach the word of God. And the word says nothing can separate you from his love. In John 6, it tells us what? Anybody can come to him under any condition that he has never cast anyone from his presence. That word is what I hang on. That word is what I look for every morning. That word is what I appreciate every night before I lay down. It is imperative that the word of God is rightly divided. Sin can be thrown. He's giving you an opportunity, but you won't receive it because you're too busy running away. How are you receiving that? See, David is praying here. He's clearly letting us know that he underst I understand my position, God, and I understand your position, and I know that you want it better for me. Come on now. Anybody ever prayed that prayer? Come on now. I'm saying something. I'm saying something. Anybody ever prayed that? I know you want better for me, but God, it just seems so difficult. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Read. Verse 7. Cleanse me with hyssop. Oh, stop. Then he says this. Then he says, I got an idea. <laughs> he says, you know, and I tell you all the time, quit coming to me with problems if you don't have a proposal. But he has one. Watch me! Oh! And his and I'll be as white as... Good God! That's one of my most favorite. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious. Is that slow? See, that is that, that, that's that thing. Now, I'm trying to figure out now, how can white turn the sinful? Oh, my God. How can, oh, my God. Look at the chemistry behind that. Talk to me. Talk to me, scientists. Look at the chemistry behind this thing here. Wash me. Wash me. So he comes with a proposal. He says, I understand what you got going on, and I understand why you did it, but, 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 I, I don't want to just come whining. I, 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 I want to tell you maybe what could work for me. Some of you got to have some ideas of what would work for you. Does anybody out there have, a, have an idea of what would work? Because he's individual. Does anybody have any idea? I'm going through with a, I got an idea. Oh, it ain't easy, but I guess, how about if you wash me? A food in hyssop. Read. Cleanse me with hyssop, uh, and I will be clean. Uh, Wash stop. me. Stop! If you do this, I will be. Now that's a sermon right there. I will be. I, I believe. I will be. What that he didn't understand is that I am. <laughs> it is not the past tense. It is not the Future tense, it is the now. I am. I am not I will be, but I, I am. It is, it is not I could be. I am. It is not that I want to be. It is a I am. I am. I am. I wash. You already washed me. You gave me everything that I needed. I know I've done wrong. How is it that I'm still carrying my sins? And you told me I've been forgiven. Wash me. Wash me what can make me whole.
all again? I think about the blood of Jesus. Now, this is the murderer praying now. So sorry, the audacity of a murderer to have this kind of conversation with my God. The audacity of the sinner to have this conversation with my God. The audacity of this adulterer, sinning, murderous behavior, doc, having this conversation with my God. <laughs> Where's your heart lie? What did he do right? He ran to God. He ran to him. You're sinning and running away from him. You say, why, why do you say the past? I'm not sinning. You think, you think that when you look in the mirror and you don't see the perfection he created, you're not sinning? Whew, what? If you don't see what God has created and the way he wants you to see it, you are a sinner. If you don't look in the mirror and see that you're fabulous, yeah. <laughs> If you don't look in the mirror and say and see that you're healed, oh my God. If you don't look in the mirror and receive the blessings that are upon you, if you if you don't look in the mirror and see what he's created, then you are a sinner. Read. Wash me. Woo! And I will be whiter than snow. Uh-uh. Let me hear joy and gladness. Because I'm having difficulties hearing it now. Because I'm wrapped up in my own stuff. Oh my God. I can't even hear what you want me to hear the way you want me to hear it. I can't even see the things you want me to see the way you want me to see it. Because I'm too wrapped up in it. Ensnared by my own stuff. When you get involved in your own stuff and run from God, you are clouded. You can't see the way he wants you to see. You can't look. And you wonder why you're stagnant. Why are you stagnant? You're stagnant because you're not moving and navigating your way through God's eyes. You're navigating through your own eyes. Oh, my God. God's proposal, wash me. Wash me, God. Wash me. And how does a sinner come to God asking for a favor? Shoo, my, 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 my. Because he sinned. He was not a sinner. You all miss that? He sinned, but he was not a sinner. See, it was not the repetition of his behaviors. It was the act that he got caught up in because he couldn't control a desire. It was a challenge for him. But he sinned, but he was not a sinner. Why you say that, Pastor? Because I threw that thing in the sea. <laughs> you can't be stacking the deck. What? That's why he went to God. I'm telling you, every time I think I've done wrong, Father, forgive me for I have sinned. Every time, I mean, oh, Father, I forgot to bless my food. Lord, thank you for the food. Lord, thank you for the bite that I already went in. I was so hungry. Lord, forgive me. I didn't bless you. See, you all think it's <clears throat> being a Jesus freak. Oh, no, I'm building a relationship. You know why? Because my daddy loves it when I call his name. Come on. Come on. Come. I could make that relative. What man, what? The, <laughs> One of the first things human services learn when you're making phone calls is people like to hear me. In those jobs, like to hear you call their name. Can I help you, Miss Mayor? Okay, Miss Mayor, that would be no problem. See, you should have said, God feels the same way. And then don't, Daddy God, oh my God, Daddy God, I've done wrong. I've done wrong. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm, I'm trying, Daddy, but help me. Oh my goodness. How dare David come to God with a prayer like this? David's honesty was seeking truth. Read on. Verse 8. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. So this is what he said. I don't even want you to see me now, God. You ever felt so dirty you didn't want nobody to see you? You ever taken so many showers of trying to get that filth off of you? You ever smoked so much weed that you tried to be numb? You ever had a been in a car crash and didn't realize you were in one until you woke up in the hospital the next day because you couldn't hear his gladness? David was struggling, man. But you know what? He's not the only one that struggled. He was struggling. He was struggling. He was having difficulties with this thing. He didn't know where to put it. It was just out there just like that. 
but he was asking for help. We as Christians have to stop acting like we bad mama jamma. So you act, you gotta run to daddy. You gotta run to Father God. You gotta let him know that you need him. Sometimes you don't know. You don't know your body is is, is restless and, and you're having sweats and you can't get comfortable. Run to God. Have a distinguish what's going on. You, you can't get your thoughts right. You're buying all this skin like a logo. You're getting stuff off the counter trying to think. Maybe it's, I, I bet you if you just run to God. Yeah. See, I, I, I'm telling you, j just run to God. We, we, we're all sinners. And we've all fallen short of his goodness and of his mercy. I, I, I'm not trying to call your stuff out there. Because I don't mind being transparent. Because ain't nothing you could do. You ain't got to have it in hell to put me in. But I'm hoping my testimony helps you. Because it sure helps me to talk about it. I told God. I said, God, I need you. you see, this is why that song always resonates in my spirit. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Because if I put my guard down, I just might lose the fight. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me. Ah! Now, <laughs> read on. Verse 10. Creating me a pure heart. Stop. David's impression of his sin was he had lost his heart. So he's asking for a new creation. He, he thought that that sin had taken all his goodness away because he had a heart for the people and he had defiled Bathsheba and he knew not what to do. He says, create in me. Start from the get, get beginning. Go, go back to the origin. Take this one you gave me and just throw it away. I'm, I'm here to tell you there's some goodness left in you. You haven't done anything so horrible that he doesn't want you in his presence. Matter of fact, the more dirty you are, the more welcome you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's so important that every message that I preach always leads you back to God loves you. And there's a concern now because I find out all this stuff that's happening in our communities is God is loving us and we're not loving ourselves. Because we cannot forgive ourselves for some of the things that we've done based on the poor teachings that are coming across in these pulpits. There's a place for you in the kingdom, and there's room at the cross. And he's welcoming you right now. And there's somebody that hears my voice, and I don't even know if you're hearing it right now, or I don't know if you're going to hear it when you see it on YouTube later, but I want you to know that New Birth Community, African Methodist Episcopal Church, will teach you to rightly divide an uncut word. And it's always going to resolve that God loves me. But this is what I want you to know. God loves me. So it doesn't matter if I sin. It's not the perspective. The perspective is God loves me. And that reason, I don't want to sin. <laughs> but he never takes his love from us. John, six chapter. Read it. Read on, Stevie. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Now we know what renew means. So now he said, I want to clean heart but I, I want to keep the spirit with a little what he's saying the spirit of God I need you there I need you to see me differently don't look at me through I, the eyes that I look at myself don't don't look at me like that I I, I don't want you to see me God I, 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 I'm ashamed of what I've done but if you give me a new heart and renew in me if you if, and renew me a right spirit David's all over the place. But what he he was, is he was before the right person. All over the place, but in front of the right person. Oh my God, read on. This is good. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit. What? I want to see me as you see me. Because I, I, I see that there's a conflict here. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. And, and David is recognizing this now. He says, renew this thing in me. 
Get me, read that again. Read that again. He, he's, he's, he's saying something now. He's, he's getting some clarity. What are you saying, Pastor? I said, the more you talk to him, the more clarity you'll get. Listen as the, the prayer progresses, how he comes from being lonely to, I know what can work. Read it again. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Because <laughs> I need help. <laughs> he said, I need, some, I need some sustenance. I need something to help. Do you got any angels that can put under my arm? I'm, I'm falling, God. I'm, I, could you give me something to sustain, to hold me up? Just, just hold me up. I want to be better. I do want to be better. And, and, and I've sinned and I've fallen short of your goodness, but I want to be better. I'm having difficulties looking in the mirror at myself because I'm, I'm having difficulties because I know you're seeing me through that mirror. And God, I need you. I need you. My body is weeping. My eyes are weeping. My soul needs a resting place. See, he prayed the prayer, but had difficulties receiving the answer. God answers prayer <laughs> all the time. All the time. But we have difficulty. You say, Pastor, how we have difficulties? Because we're too busy watching TV, watching movies. See, I, I, that's why I don't watch too many movies. Because in the movies, you know, they make God out to be this dude who punishes you because you make a mistake. As opposed to disciplining you, disciplining you because you're his child. You see what I'm saying? It, it, it is the media. It is. It is. I got to have mink eyelashes. I got to have a waist trainer and a big butt. I got to have. I see all these things. I lean to, <clears throat> as opposed to appreciating the creation that he has made. And so my honesty is not from his godly wisdom, but from. All those things like my culture. Oh, you look just act just like your daddy. You ain't never going to be anything. All those cultural things is what's looking back at me in the mirror. And it's difficult. And this is why I talk about haters. Haters always want to say what you used to do. People won't let you just live and love God. What? What's, what's wrong with me loving the Lord? Why can't I love me some Jesus? Why can't, why can't, why, why I got to be some kind of Jesus freak to be in church every Sunday? I happen to be the pastor, but why, why, why I got to be strange? Why I got to be strange because I'm not licking and laughing and sucking like I used to? Why, why I got to be strange? There is a freedom in knowing Christ, and I am comfortable with sharing myself with my creator. Why does that make me strange? But does it make you strange that you're 50 and you're still doing it? Putting dollars in G-strings, coming home with sweaty dollar bills, smelling and glitter on your money. Who's the stranger here? Talk to me. Who's the stranger here? Because if I'm going to sin, I'm going to bring the dancers in the church. Yeah, because if I'm going to do it, I'm, I'm going to be honest about doing it. And then I'm going to know the truth and go to the truth teller and tell him what I've done. No more am I hiding my face. No more of that. No more am I tiptoeing with my shoes trying to come in and the door don't squeak. I'm slamming the door and I'm coming with a flashlight under my chin so you'll know it's me. I'm coming for you the same way he wants to come for you, but he's not a rapist. Take your sins to Jesus. He'll work it out. He wants you to be with him. But your friends won't let it rest. Your, your associates won't let it rest. Come on, remember how we used to do it? Remember what happened? We oh, remember the time we got so wasted. I do remember that, but I can't figure out why you bring it up every time you see me. I remember now. I, I, I'm honestly telling you I remember. But why do you keep bringing that up? If you're not strong in your godly wisdom... Someone else's honesty will reconstruct your life. If you're not saturated and rooted in your godly wisdom, what others say through their honesty will reconstruct your life. I don't need nobody else framing this but me. 
<laughs> I am, I am an expensive oil painting. And it's been framed by God. And so when you're not strong enough and people can turn you like a doorknob one way or the other, they want to bring up what you used to do. Because they're trying to strip you of the power that you already have. You recognize, I tell you all the time, your enemies recognize your power more than you recognize your power. They recognize your anointing before you recognize your anointing. You can't understand this thing because you can't forgive yourself. And you can't forgive yourself because you can't, you, you always want someone's bringing it up. But it was thrown in the sea. It was thrown in the sea. But you can't forget. And so you can't forgive. So Peter, Peter, this is what I want you to do. He said, God, how often, how, how many times I got to forgive somebody? Out of frustration, Peter said, how many times? He said, what are you saying? How many times? Seven? <laughs> seven times seven? Four and ninety times? What's the odds of God telling you to forgive someone else without telling you to forgive yourself? I want you to look in that mirror and I want you to be proud of what you see. That's the beginning. That's the beginning. I want you to look in the mirror and say, Father, forgive me for I have sinned. And see, this is what's happening. What's happening, Pastor? Can I talk to you all? Oh, this is the ring light making my eyes red. Uh, what's happening is the churches have made people officers that have not repented for their sins. Woo -woo. Woo -woo. Did I say that? The churches are so busy trying to find people to be there that they're giving people offices and having them shout and holler and run around church, but they have not taught them to repent and atone for their sins. <laughs> Ooh, I'm stepping on toes. I'm saying, are you one of those people? I'm just asking, I'm not passing judgment now. But are you one of the people who run around church but run from God? Are you one of those people who get a solo because you have a decent voice but you don't repent for your sins so you're singing a lie? Oh my God. Are, are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you on the trustee board? And Okay, you get where I'm coming from. That's a sin. See, everybody thinks sins are these big things. They can be big things as well, but they can be small things as well. But the Bible does tell us, you know, there are no big sins and little sins. You know, I don't want to be a thirsty pastor. And yeah, a thirsty pastor is one that's get everybody a position. Hell, you better wait it out like I waited. <laughs> I don't care. It may not be the church where you ski on but you get peed on. I don't care. This is God's house. You, 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 he holds me accountable. I'm trying to get you to understand the word of God because you've been sitting up in churches forever not knowing what that man or that woman of God is talking about. And now you get it. Now you get it. But I know sometimes you get it because I can tell where you come from based on those little cliches you put in my comment box. I'm rightly dividing. I don't need a cliche. I need you to understand what role you play in where you sit. You're your biggest enemy. God loves you. He wants the best for you. His job is blessings. He's in the blessing business. I'm not going to go to Cadillac and ask for a Chevy. I'm going for the product that he has. I'm going with God. Why? Right? Because he gives us blessings. And the first blessing is that. Recognize it, that the product that he offers is foolproof. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And I accept that. Whatever skin he's put me in, he wants me. I am a sinner saved by grace. Whoa! That thing right there. Oh, my God. Through my faith, I believe that on that great day, when I see him, I will be made perfect. But until then, here, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. So I'm running toward him. 
on a regular basis. I'm letting him know that I haven't done right. I've messed up because of the challenges of, of my honesty. It's keep overriding my godly wisdom. When you say, Pastor, how do you build your godly wisdom? Stay in his presence. Stay in the presence of God. One way or the other. I'm not asking you to walk around with encyclopedia, Bibles, or handbooks in your pocket. No, what I'm asking you is communicate with him. Talk to him. Let him know that you're there. He would enjoy that. Because he loves you. There's a place for you in the kingdom. I just need you to come through the door. Is there anyone out there who needs to know Jesus in the pardoning of their sin? All of you are my children, I think. I don't know. I can't see because this light is in my eyeballs. But is there anybody out there? Anybody out there who's afraid because of the discipline that he might offer versus the redirection that comes with the freedom of knowing him? I want you to DM me. I want you to contact one of my team members. And they'll offer you the prayer of salvation. You can't be at the church where I am. You can't be with me if you ain't took the prayer of salvation. Because that means you're just going through the motions. Father, forgive me for I have sinned. That's the prayer David prayed in Psalms. The 51st division of the Psalms. Yeah. I, I Take this. Wash me. And when you come to him, come to him with a plan. Wash me in his up. And I'll be as white as snow. Honesty. What you think of yourself. Godly. Wisdom. Is what you should receive. From him. On what he created. In you. A right heart. A right mind. My time is up. Ah, and I really do. Thank you for you spending yours with me. I love you, Katrina, Benita, Reverend Dawn, First Lady Cousin. Hey, we all got challenges. But I'm telling you, <laughs> the, you don't want to run away from God because of them. You want to run toward them. So, yes, I love you, Daddy God. So, we leave this place better than which we came. Hey, Margaret, Sister Anne, I love you. Mavis, I love you. Mr. Conson, Lady Kylie, and Joe. Cheryl, I love you. I'll see you at 7. No, this is Wednesday. I'll see you at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. There is a word from the Lord. Hey, Shanice. Shanice, everybody, you know Shanice still showing up too. Shanice, why do you keep coming to this broadcast? Why do you keep coming back? I love you, Kim. Shanice, type in and tell me why you keep coming back. Lady Cousins, I got so many uh, uh, viewers in California. I thank you because you're spreading the word, girl. <laughs> you are spreading the word. Shanice, tell me why you keep coming back. I got your message, Janetta. We're going to get on that. He loves you. And I'm waiting for uh, Shanice to give me a, a, a response. Get it. Let me know if it comes because you know I won't be able to see it. Love you, Dr. Austin. I can't wait to see you all on the 20th. My God, my God, my God. Love you, Peaches. Okay, we can't do it. I can't see it. Oh, okay. Okay, cool, Shanice. I'm glad I'm feeding you, girl, because if you're hungry, come if you're hungry, I will feed you. The word of funk. <coughs> Uncut funk. Word of God. Okay, Lady Edmonds, love you. My time is up, and I thank you for spending yours with me. Hey, guess what? I'll be on again. Sunday morning at 11. Be there. Who said that? Shanice, Shanice says, I love my new church home. <laughs> I love Amen. Uh, you would love a new church? Oh, hey. We got to stay on now. I can't see. Uh, wait a minute, Shanice. You want to be with me? <clears throat> you see her? You see me. You see me? You see her. Wait a minute. You want to be with me? I'm a TikToker. What can I say? Shanice, tell me you want to be with me, girl. I, I want you to be my spiritual mama. Hey, Phoebe, tell me I want you to be my spiritual mama. Say that. If you put that in there, it's all like popcorn.
Show me. Let me see if I don't see it, guys. You know I can't see it. The lights are mine. Say, I want you. <laughs> I'm getting geeked. Another one coming home? I I'm excited. Tell me, Shanice, so I can call you this evening. Tell me. Come on, girl. She said, yes, please, be my spiritual mama. <laughs> okay, I want you to repeat it after me. You all help me because I can't see it. Okay, let me know when she says it. Father, forgive me for I have sinned. You got to wait, guys. You got to wait because I got to see it. Father, forgive me for I sinned. Type it in there. Type it. Run into God. Run into God. Father, forgive me for I've sinned. I'm so excited. Welcome, girl. Father, forgive me for I've sinned. Type it, Shanice. She got it. Now type, but I'm running back to you. Now say, but I'm running back to you. Let me know when you see it. That's right, Crystal. Hey! But I'm running back to you with open arms. Now type, forgive me <laughs> for my sin. Let me know when it comes up. Forgive me for my sins. Is it there? Okay, now type, and I'll be careful to give you all the glory, honor, and the praise. Just say it in your heart. I'm tired of trying to read it. I'll be careful. <laughs> I'll be careful to give you all the glory, honor, and the praise. I am. Uh, I am and will always be your spiritual mom. Welcome to NBC. We's married now. Will you give me the honor? All you got to do is say yes or no on being your spiritual leader, your spiritual mom, and giving you guidance. Will you marry me in spiritual love that I might be your spiritual mom? All I need is a yes. All I need is yes. You done did the prayer of repentance. That's right. She said yes. Somebody take off running. NBC, everybody hit that run thing. Somebody run. Everybody run on the side. Run. 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 Alice, Allison, find the running lady key. Don't just type running. Come on, run. Come on, run, Miss Hobbs. Hit that running key. Take time, Miss Hobbs. <laughs> you belong to me. One of the team members and I will contact you as soon as possible. We are so excited about it. We believe that we are a good Zion. A Bible teaching, Bible believing church. We love the Lord. <laughs> That's it. Run, Rochelle. You better run. Run, Dodger. Run. Run. Thank you, Robin. Run. Stephen, you're running. Run, Vanita. Jessica's running. Trust me, you can't change clothes and you're running. Okay, Amy, Amy, you did a marathon. Reverend Gooch got a marathon going on. I love you guys. Shanice, I'll contact you if you, at this point, go to Messenger. And how do we do it? Go to NBC's page in Messenger. Is that right? No? Okay, Jess, uh, Jessica's doing that now so I can get your phone number and I'll contact you. Thank you, Mavis, for doing that. Thank you, Otis. For, Otis, you changing clothes, all kinds of clothes while you running. Running right out your garments. I love you all. So Shirley, I love you. Little Crane. <laughs> Big Daddy, I love you. My time is up. And my eyes are turning red. And I really appreciate you spending yours with me. I contact you real soon. Real soon. Bye-bye.